as Tashi started talking about it, I was experiencing this electricity that I remember from the mid to late 90s when I was a part of this team and seeing and experiencing the amount of energy that they were putting into the program, despite the idiosyncrasies of this bike or this or that that had to do with the evolution of this kind of technology. It's obvious that a lot of smart people spent a lot of time developing this bike. I'm Tashi Dennis and I restore mountain bikes. This transmission box, there is this uh, cover that looks to be protective and if you look at all that's going on under here, you can see why they want to protect it from rocks and things. It's kind of this high pivot design, this multi-link design. The chain is acting at this point when it's under tension and you obviously can't make the chain ring any bigger without interfering with a swing arm. And if you move the point that the chain is actually pulling, it's going to affect the suspension differently. If you look at this thing, it's actually, this ring is actually spinning faster than the crank arm itself. And the way this is done is the crank arm uh, is attached obviously to the other side. And on the other side, there's a, a cog that it's rigidly attached to. We'll just do it backwards so you can see it's already gone behind the crank arm and now it's ahead of it. It's catching up to it. So, so the idea was a, a chain drive gearbox and so the cranks drive a cog on this side which transfers up to the front to this jack shaft which you can see coming through here and it drives another cog which drives a cog on the back side of your chain ring which is rigidly connected to the chain ring. And so the idea is by loosening these bolts, you can actually swap out these cogs on, on different sides and change the gear ratio. A modern downhill bike is probably running pretty close to what that right side chain ring is now. And that's probably, that might be a 30 or a 32. And that's not that uncommon to just run that gear on its own. <laughs> because, you know, back then we were dealing with some tracks where you're having to pedal the bike a lot of times at 40, 45, 50 miles an hour. Whereas now you don't really have to pedal a bike at that speed or maintain that high speed. So it was supposed to be like a zero effect drive. Whereas like as you're pedaling, your pedal force has no effect on what the rear wheel is doing, which seemed really noticeable at the time. Like when we first got on these bikes, it was 97 and they were red, but everything was pretty much the same and you know now people break chains occasionally well we broke chains a lot <laughs> I mean the the I remember multiple occasions where I coasted this bike to the finish line and found myself on the podium with no no chain the hype around the Volvo Cannondale team and the equipment was so awesome. All these little pieces on here, there's just a lot of stuff that people would go out of their way to, to make for you, you know, and make uh, special. So. Doug Dalton made these little tabs for me. Um, just at the time, we requested a longer lever. Yeah, and actually, if you look at this one, I think Doug intentionally rough this one up. Yeah, it's possible. We'll rough this just so you have a little more traction on that. We needed to track down fork parts, asking Doug Dalton, who was instrumental in designing these bikes in the first place. Through Miles, they were able to come up with a pair of legs. So actually, the legs are different. One is an air leg, and so you see a air valve down here for that, and so you can adjust the spring right there, and then there's coil springs uh, in this leg. And if you take it apart, I found an actually a quarter is in separating the two springs. So I dropped a quarter as a separator. <laughs> Inside of the fork legs are these mm -hmm. rows of needle bearings. So the technical advantage to this is on a, on a normal telescopic fork, you can have your lowers, your uppers, it has that rotation. And so whatever your brake arch is, is really important to keep your axle from twisting. Here, each leg is providing that torsional stiffness to the axle. So it, your front wheel shouldn't have wandered too much independent of the legs. And so with this design, they realized at some point that there was so much torsional stiffness in one leg that they could just design forks and remove a leg and just go off of one side. And that's how the lefty fork came out, which is, is still in production. Steve Gravenitis. Right on, right on, right on, right on. 
myself after a day of testing. We sat down and we designed this tire. The tire profile and the tire tread pattern and everything, I kind of made that up on a cocktail napkin over a burrito, which was pretty <laughs> sweet. <laughs> for me, the, the whole time period was so electric for me that, that kind of I started to feel excited again about it and remembering how important it was to me at the time and uh, how lucky I felt at the time also to be kind of the, the guy that got to ride these bikes and be, you know, part of the program.